low class. Nowadays, we hear and read a lot about predictions related to the pandemic. In science, there are two legs of the scientist's chair. One is deductive logic, the other is inductive logic. As to the deduction part, the scientists deduce consequences from the theory to predict new phenomena that should of course be tested against observation. If predictions are not upheld, modify the theory until able to provide successful descriptions. Today's topic is heat capacity of the free electron gas. Related to the topic, there's a prediction by classical mechanics, classical statistical mechanics. The prediction is that a free particle should have a heat capacity of 3 halves times Boltzmann constant or 3 halves k sub b. If there are n number of atoms, each atom gives one valence electron to the electron gas. The electrons are freely mobile. Then the contribution of these mobile electrons to the heat capacity is 3 halves times n times k sub b. However, the observed electronic contribution at temperature equal to 300 Kelvin is usually less than 0 0.01 of 3 halves times n times k sub b. There's a solution to this discrepancy. That's Pauli exclusion principle and also Fermi-Dirac distribution function. When we heat up a specimen from absolute zero to some temperature, not every electron gains approximately k sub b times t energy as expected classically but only those electrons in orbitals within an energy range k sub b t of the Fermi level. What amount of energy do these electrons gain? The answer is of the order k sub b t. As discussed in the previous lecture, if we have n electrons, we fill up the energy until n over 2 at absolute zero temperature. If we have 6 electrons, the highest energy field is n equals 3. Then, if the temperature is increased, there are higher levels that become occupied. The electrons within approximately k sub b t of the highest level are excited, while those at lower levels are trapped. One way of looking at this is, here is a sea of electrons and those at the surface are at the highest energy. These electrons at the surface can absorb energy as heat. Therefore, it is the ripples in the Fermi sea that determine the electronic properties. The higher the temperature, the more ripples, and the more electrons can be excited to higher levels. The qualitative solution to the problem of the heat capacity of the electron gas is the following. If big N is the number of electrons, only a fraction of the order of T over T sub F can be excited thermally when the specimen is heated to temperature T because only this fraction lies within an energy range of the order of k sub b times t of the top of the energy distribution. So we have n times t over t sub f. Each of these electrons has a thermal energy of the order of k sub b t. The total electronic thermal kinetic energy is u equals 
n times t over t sub f times k sub b times t. The electronic heat capacity is the first order derivative of the thermal energy. So C equals du over dt, and that is equal to n times k sub b times t over t sub f. We see that this is directly proportional to temperature in agreement with the experiment. At room temperature, the heat capacity is smaller than the classical value of 3 halves times n times k sub b by a factor of 0 0.01 or less for t sub f approximately 50,000 Kelvin. Here we derive a quantitative expression for the heat capacity at low temperatures, k sub b t much less than e sub f, or much less than Fermi energy. The increase in total energy is delta u equals u of t minus u of 0. That is the increase in energy when the system is heated from absolute 0 to temperature t. In the expression for total energy, F is the Fermi-Dirac distribution function, and D of E is the density of states. The heat capacity is obtained by differentiating U with respect to T. In the expression obtained, only the Fermi-Dirac distribution function is temperature dependent. In order to obtain this expression, we use the identity for big N number of orbitals and afterward E sub F multiplied by dN over dt. At the temperatures of interest, K sub B T much less than the Fermi energy or the ratio K sub B times T over E sub F less than 0 0.01. The term E minus E sub F times DF over DT is large only at energies near the Fermi energy. It is good approximation to evaluate the density of states at Fermi energy and take it out of the integral. We also ignore the temperature dependence of the chemical potential. Thus, we now have this expression for dF over dt. It follows that the expression for the electronic heat capacity becomes this. We may safely replace the lower limit by negative infinity because the factor e to the x in the integrand is already negligible at x equals e sub f over k sub b t. If we are concerned with low temperatures such as e sub f much greater than k sub b times t or e sub f approximately 100 times k sub b times t. Okay? The integral becomes pi squared over 3. Therefore, the electronic heat capacity becomes pi squared over 3 times density of states times k sub b squared times t. Furthermore, the density of states for a free electron gas is 3n over 2 e sub f. The Fermi temperature of this electron gas is T sub F equals E sub F over K sub B and in agreement with what is obtained via qualitative argument. T sub F is not an actual temperature but a convenient reference temperature. At temperatures much below the D by temperature and the Fermi temperature, the heat capacity is the sum of two types, the electronic heat capacity 
and the heat capacity due to phonons. The constant gamma and the beta are characteristic of the specimen. They can be obtained by, by uh, experimental fitting of data, as we shall see next. It is convenient to exhibit the experimental values of heat capacity C as a plot of the ratio C over T or heat capacity over temperature versus T squared or temperature squared. For then, the points should lie on a straight line with slope equal to beta and intercept equal to gamma. The following plot is that of potassium specimen. Gamma is known as the Sommerfeld parameter. 